DJ Ui Ungalale committed the day after we got off of here, so we didn't get to talk about it, but he commits to the Knowles. Is QB1 assumed? Can't imagine Brock beats him out, but best of luck in that competition. Uh, DJ Ui Ungalale, quarterback one next year, it seems. What are your thoughts there? I love it. And, you know, to your point, TJ, I don't think Brock uh, saw this in – decided to say, all right, well, I guess it's next year for me. I, th- I think Brock is is ready to compete for the job, and I think he will. I think DJ uh, you know, ultimately wins the job, but I think he's a guy, man, for a team that struggled so much in you know third and short and fourth and short situations, Mike Norvell's got to be like, all right, give me this guy, the 6'5", 250. He is a massive human being. Um, you know, and I love that he kind of waited, like it seemed, I think Florida state was the only visit he took and, you know, he kind of waited, obviously Cam Ward is, was probably Florida state's preference if we're being honest. And he ended up, you know, going to the NFL draft. And I think it was a situation where not only did you think Cam Ward had a higher ceiling, but also you wanted to keep him away from Miami who you have to play in as your biggest rival. So him going to the NFL and us getting DJ Uyunglele is the best case scenario, in my opinion, because now Miami's scrambling. Like they're looking at FCS quarterbacks. Like this, this is crazy. I think this is the best case scenario for Florida State. I think DJ, you know, he was the last quarterback to beat Florida State in the regular season in the past two years. You know, Florida State went on to win 19 games since then. So DJ knows how to play a great game at Doak. Um, his dad is awesome. Give him a follow on Twitter. Uh, he's kind of like the Rob Deloach uh, of this year's team uh, coming up. But yeah, I'm I'm very excited. I think he's got a massive arm. You know, he's going to have some opportunities. I think Jordan's probably the better player of the two. But with with Mike and and Tony, I think they can really mold him into a very good college quarterback. Yeah, I, I think. You know, when you look at the, you know, the play that he had at Clemson, a lot of Florida State fans were pretty down on this at one point. Um, But then you look at the way that he played at Oregon State. You also look at, I mean, look how Clemson's next quarterback has played in in Cade Klubnik. Um, And you might kind of say like, well, maybe it's Clemson, not me, you know. Hey, it's you, not me, right? Um, And and you look at what Mike's done with quarterbacks at at Memphis and and here, obviously, with Jordan Travis as well. we kind of like the idea of, of him being able to get a little bit more out of DJU. It's it's astonishing to me that when you look at QBR, which is not the end-all be-all, Richie, but we talked about this, DJ had a slightly better QBR than Jordan Travis, who I think didn't play as well this year as, as he did the year uh, prior. I, I You know, offense wasn't as good this year as it was the year prior. I don't think that's shocking to anybody. But when you look at that, I think that he obviously has the capability of being really, really good for the Knowles. And, uh, you know, he, I, to me... I think your ceiling with Brock was probably around that seven, eight mark. Um, you know, some of those auto wins that I talked about, what need to be auto wins this year probably are not uh, auto wins. Um, but when you add DJ, that ceiling rises by a couple of games, maybe like Richie said, even even four games um, to get it up to that 12 level. So, yeah, I think you're, you, you've got the chance to be in every game that you're, you know, you play. Um, you know, I think right now my, my win total right now for the Knowles is nine or nine or 10 wins with, with DJ. I need to see them add some more in the portal. I need to, to do a little bit more, but I like the pickup. I, yeah. Cam Ward was everybody's number one pick. I mean, the guy, guy is going to the NFL. Like if you can add NFL, I don't think that's a shot at DJ. I think that's you know like, Hey dog, we got a chance to it get this is, guy yeah. who's going to the NFL. We're going to try and get this guy that's going to the NFL. You know, like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, of course you're going to try that. But I think DJ was patient. DJ wanted to be a Seminole. You, you know, I'm not one of these guys like, oh, just give me the guy that wants to be a Noel over anybody. You know, hey, I, if Cam Ward was there, I was more than happy to get Cam Ward. But I think I think there is some value to DJ really waited around, really wanted this, didn't entertain it, other offers. Man, it shows his maturity, me. in my opinion. It does, man. He he knew, he knows what, and I think he's got a lot of faith. And, and as much as we give Norvell a hard time for, you know, coaching decisions or, or whatever, <laughs> The fact that DJ was like, no, 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 I got to be developed by Norvell. I, I want to go play at the next level. I got to come here. Like I, that mindset, man, that's huge. And that is massive. And so I, I, I am really looking forward to DJ Uyunglele playing for Florida State. You know, I, I'll, I'll say this, and, and I think it's going to go very well. Like I just said, I think we win nine, 10 games, maybe more. We'll see uh, next year in the regular season. I think he beats both rivals, you know? So like, I, I think we're in really good hands. They're really good shape there. So, um, Worst case scenario, Richie, 
you, you don't hit your ceiling. You, hit, you, you win eight games, and you move on, right? You got the young yeah. guys. You got Luke. You got Brock. It's a one-year thing. No big deal. You, you move on, and you go. So let me I like DJ pickup yeah. a lot. Yeah, um, let me read this. Uh, his dad tweeted today, DJ has finally arrived in Tallahassee, Florida. He hit the ground running, going straight to workouts and training with his teammates at Florida State. He is entering next season with the utmost confidence. DJ is no stranger to hard work. He always he is always the first one to practice and the last one to leave, just like he was at Oregon State. He will be a sponge and do everything necessary to prepare for next season. Nothing is promised. Everything is earned. That's DJ's mentality. And what he values is this opportunity. DJ does not take this opportunity lightly, and he is fully prepared to fight for the starting position and earn it. Go Knowles. I love that. I love it. I love the mindset. Again, I love the kid. Didn't didn't entertain other offers. Wanted to be part of, uh, of Florida State. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to see what we can do this year. I think he yeah. – you know, we, we'll talk way more about his game as um, as time goes along. But I'm I'm really excited for him. Um, past that, four portal editions. Man, I was hoping that last one would come in like an hour before, so that we could have like four in 48 hours. But or I'm sorry, in 24 hours, ended up just being a little over that. About 25 hours though, Florida State has added four guys in the portal. Let me talk about them all really quickly, Richie, and then wrap yeah, up and get out of here. But fire. Jaylen, oh yeah, we can also talk about some some other targets and stuff, and then go on like other positions of need. Um, Jalen Brown, who you recruited very, very heavily. There was a time, Richie, like last September that I thought, uh, maybe like August, sorry, let's back up a little bit. Last August, I thought Florida State was going to get Hakeem Williams and Jalen Brown. Like I thought they were going to get both those guys in the 2023 signing class. Jalen Brown went to LSU. You did land Hakeem Williams. But now a little over a year later, you have both of them in your class uh, Jalen Brown, supremely talented kid. He was a top 100 kid coming out of high school. A uh, little bit outside of that now with the portal ranking. Well, no, I'm still in it, but there's obviously less guys in the portal. Not as highly sought after because you lose a, year's, uh, a year um, of him playing. But, like, I I'm excited for Jalen Brown. I think it's a big pickup. You, you lost uh, Goldie Lawrence, who, who I actually liked a ton out of uh, Central Florida, but you – land a much more talented prospect in Jalen Brown. No shots to Goldie. Hope he lands well. But uh, I really, really like Jalen Brown. I think that's a big pickup for the Knowles. Wide receiver room. I said this on the video that I did when I when I put it out. I will. I, I am past the point of ever worrying about our wide receiver room uh, at Florida State, Richie. Yeah, you know, and Goldie, huge fan of him and wish him nothing but the best. Uh, sucks that he's leaving the program, but it is what it is. And Jalen Brown, he's a guy that everybody in the country wanted everybody, Ohio state, Alabama, Georgia, USC, Florida state, Miami, and now Florida state has him. And that's the great thing about the portal. And also the crappy thing about the portal, because you could lose a guy like that, that quickly. Uh, no, he he's going to be great at Florida state. I love our wide receiver room. I, I truly think we have the best wide receiver room in the state. They just got to go out and prove yeah, it next year. That. That they just have to go out and prove it next year. And if they do the way I think they will, um, you know, they're, they're all going to earn. I don't want Tomahawks. I want Shamrocks on all their helmets next year to open the season. <laughs> yeah. So like that pickup a lot. Earl Little, a defensive back yeah. out of Alabama. Um, he was in the class before. So the 2022 signing class. I think that's a really good pickup, too. You obviously lose a couple of cornerbacks in Excuse me. I'm doing two. So, yeah, shout the battles in. I always shout the battles in when we do commitments. But, yeah, the quarter zip is on tonight. Uh, two commits today. So we did I'm, – I'm, I'm burping a little bit because we did two beers. So these are the only two beers I had cold. So we're doing a, an IPA and an Oktoberfest in January, which is really uh, – Oh, my wife made chili this week. And Oktoberfest, the spices in it, Richie, like actually really goes well with chili. So let me just tell you that. Like that wasn't a bad pairing – uh, but I'm trying to say some of Chili's my specialty. I, I would, uh, yeah. Kara is a lovely woman. I would put her chili to shame. Uh, I don't know about <laughs> that. We got to get together soon and we can, you guys can both cook it while it's still cold <laughs> outside. And then we'll do, we'll do it. Me and Lindsay will be the testers. We'll do it blind. <laughs> um, so, um, we got sidetracked a little bit. That's okay. Yeah, but I love chili. Shout out chili. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Earl Little, big time pickup. You lost Jari yeah. Jones. You lost Renardo Green uh, due to eligibility due to the NFL draft. And so you you do need some more depth there. I like Azari Thomas. I really like uh, that you're getting Fintrell Cypress back there. You probably didn't get as much as you wanted. Um, 
there, but I do like bringing in Earl Little, a guy that's been developed under Saban for two years. Um, his dad was is, is tweeting a little bit about, you know, hey, it wasn't injuries, it wasn't anything else. You're, you're about to see what what this player can be. Um, you know, taking guys from Bama that, that couldn't see the field, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You, you saw kind of what UGA's backups could do. You mean Johnson, um, yeah. Yeah, there, there's some there's some some quality there. And so I really like the Earl Little pickup as well. I don't know if you have thoughts on that um, or not. I can run through the last couple two as well, but just wanted to kind of give you a chance on on Little if you wanted. Yeah, I'll let you run through the last two, but big fan of the Earl Little. Again, another player that Florida State was in the thick of it out of high school. And it, again, it goes to show it as frustrating as it could be. I would not want to be a college football head coach right now because it, it's got to be maddening. But this is a player that seriously considered Florida State very elite talent. And with Pat Sertan, I, I love what could be here. I truly do. I think he can be a, an outstanding player for Florida State. And I cannot wait to see what happens. Actually, I'm not worried about our secondary TJ at all. And Ever. Earl Little yeah. just, just confirms that even more. Yeah, I mean, we have um, we, we spent a long time like doting and complaining about certain position groups. Uh, there are far more position groups on this offense and defense that we don't, well, you know, on this team in general that we don't worry. I, I don't worry about wide receiver. I don't worry about DB. I don't worry about running back in a Mike Norvell offense ever, a quarterback as well. And and, and so I think that you know, there's a lot of pl- 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 pros, positives. If I could spit the word out, we'll, we'll roll. So, all right, uh, Grady Kelly, defensive line transfer from Colorado State, committed today. We didn't do a video on this because I knew we'd be going live tonight and we figured we'd just talk about it here. But uh, Grady Kelly. Six foot two, two hundred eighty-five pound defensive lineman um, was a redshirt sophomore last year at thirty-five tackles, uh, a sack and a half. Uh, also blocked a kick. You know, Coach Pap has to like that. So really like this replacement, probably for like a Malcolm Ray type. I, I don't know that you're expecting Kelly to come in and just be a. He's not Braden Fist two point this year. Could he be that in twenty twenty five? Absolutely. Let's give him some time. Let's let him develop a little bit. But he will be a depth piece for Florida State this year. He will absolutely get in. He will absolutely mix it up. I, you know, I like this both about Kelly and the next guy that we're going to talk about here in just a minute. Um, Indiana uh, running back transfer uh, Jalen Lucas. Uh, neither one of them tweeted a graphic. Neither one of them tweeted an image. They just came outside of the moor and said, like, yeah, I'm committed. Like, that, to me, that's kind of cool. Like, a little bit more <laughs> business-like uh, approach. Jalen Lucas commits. Uh, he's a running back, kind of gadget player from uh, Indiana. It was originally in Louisiana, Edna Carr, where uh, uh, Destin Hill was. His brother is Ja'Kai Douglas. So I asked people, like, oh, man, you know, What's that do to Jakai now that he's the gadget? I, I don't think that bringing in uh, Lucas is going to hurt uh, anything with, with Jakai Douglas. Uh, phenomenal kick returner. I, a lot of people are asking about his punt returning. Um, it, he has like 14 career punt return yards. Stop asking about that. Put up 591 <laughs> kick return yards on 22 kick returns. I tweeted one of them. You can go find my profile on Twitter. There's another one that I shared as well where he just is blazing fast. Little guy but absolutely shot out of a cannon. Just, you know, Mike Norvell tweeted power and speed, and that's certainly what you've gotten with Kelly on the defensive line. Kind of a depth piece there, and as as well as um, Lucas as a kick returner. Um, you need you need that. You need to continue to improve the depth. You lost some guys in the portal. You lost Malcolm Ray. I saw he committed to Rutgers. Um, so you need to replace that. I think you, uh, you know, I think you probably went put, um, skill for skill there. I don't know that... One is way better than the other. Just being very honest, I don't think Ray is way better than uh, Luke uh, uh, Kelly. I don't think Kelly's way better than Ray. What you do is an extra year of eligibility because he's got two years left. So I think that's a big deal. He could be really, really good for it in 2025, which you need to build. They haven't recruited that position well enough, in my opinion. You're going to have a fine defensive line this year, but when Farmer and Jackson go to the league next year, who are your defensive tackles? I think it's a big deal that you get Kelly in. And then I really like what you can get in the kick return game with uh, with Lucas. Richie, any thoughts on those guys? Yeah, I think to your point, adding to the depth at the defensive line with Kelly, I think it's a big deal. I think Lucas, he could be kind of like a Ja'Kai Douglas, honestly, in Mike Norvell's offense. He will find ways to use that speed. You know, you, you mentioned a clip that you tweeted earlier today. Um, the guy's a burner. If he gets in the open field, he is gone. There is no catching him. I'm looking forward to seeing him in Mike Norrell's offense. They will find ways to use him, and I think he is going to be a major asset. And who knows, maybe he will be sprinting to the potatoes in the end zone in Dublin. I cannot wait to see him in Florida State. That is a heck of a pun there. So, 
Um, people have asked about other positions of need, other targets. I, I think Florida State's out on the old Miss running back, Judkins. Um, what all can we say? Yeah, I, I think he wanted to come. I, I think that Florida State just had less interest there for, for some reasons that, you know, have nothing to do with football. So, yeah, I think, I think Florida State's good on that one. Uh, a lot of questions around the Michigan State defensive end. Yeah, possibly. I think the Knolls are very much in the thick of that. Obviously, Georgia and Missouri in that as well. Um, other positions of need, I think that you could use two to three linebackers. I think you could use two more defensive linemen, one edge, one tackle. Um, I think if you found an absolute superstar at running back or wide receiver, you would not turn them down. I also expect them to get Devontae Brown, who is the DB transfer from Miami. Um, I know there's a lot of thoughts, mixed emotions on that. I, I don't know. I'll save my takes on that for if and when it happens. But, yeah, I think Devontae Brown from Miami probably ends up at Florida State. Uh, UCF transfer, who was at Miami last year. Didn't have a great year for Miami. Was really good at UCF. Um, and so hopefully if, if he does transfer here, you can kind of get that UCF version of him. But, again, two linebackers. A defensive tackle, another edge, maybe two defensive tackles. I don't know, somewhere in there. Maybe an offensive lineman. And then again, I, I don't think you have to have a running back or wide receiver. If you got an absolute stud at either one of those positions, you're always looking to raise the ceiling and the floor of any kind of room. I don't think you need a running back. I saw some comments on that. Um, but I do think Mike Larvell likes to tackle running back by committee. And so if you can get somebody who you think is really, really good and take some of the burden off to Philly and other guys, then you'll do that. You lost Rodney Hill um, and obviously Trey Benson. So you'll, you'll take running backs for the, for the roster just to kind of take loads off other guys. So 